Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, out today at the Minnesota Women's State Open here at Rush Creek Golf Club, and I have the pleasure to be joined by Emma Carpenter. Uh, Emma is a golfer at the University of Minnesota, and she's competing in the w Minnesota Women's State Open. Emma, thank you for joining us today and taking the time. Yeah, no, thank you so much. I'm, I'm excited to, to walk you through the warm-up and, and what I do to prepare to hopefully get the win today. Yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting for the viewers to see the you know in-depth look at how a Division I golfer prepares for an event, uh, especially one. Now, this is kind of a big event around here, the Minnesota mm -hmm. Women's State Open. So um, without further ado, I think we can kind of get into it um, and for, you can kind of maybe walk us through a little bit and show us how it's done. And, but first, I kind of want to ask, you know, really how important is a warm-up routine and making sure kind of to get the mind right, but also get your swing right and, you know, really get ready for competition. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like kind of the key word is, is routine, right? So every single one of us wants to walk to the first tee feeling fully prepared and fully confident in that we've put in the work and mm -hmm. what we're going to do. So, you know, all, all the main work practice goes goes on behind the scenes before, uh, before the tournament. Mm -hmm. But the routine that you go through needs to be something that is consistent, that you do every time, that you know works, that you know gets you feeling good going up to the first tee. So that's what we're going to do. Perfect. Well, let's get started here. Kind of, you know, you're, you just walked onto the range, you're, you know, you teen off an hour, hour and a half, whatever it might be. What is your first step? Yeah, so my very first step, critically important. I would say I just started doing this about a year and a half ago when I started working with my trainer, Greg Barker, back back in Chicago. But so I go through, I go through a stretching routine that usually takes me about about 10 minutes, 10, okay. 15 minutes maybe, but it's really important. I mean, all of the all the best golfers, all the pro golfers, they, they shouldn't be starting warming up just by hitting balls. Right. You gotta get your body moving, you gotta, um, you, you gotta stretch in and get loose. So mm -hmm. that's what I start with. Perfect, well, okay, so now you've, you've, you've completed your stretching routine um, and you kinda you know, show us how that's done and then you kinda get, start hitting some balls. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I think most golfers you know, start, they don't maybe do, I would say, uh, don't always do the stretching part, which might be the first mistake, but then they get into big hitting ten, balls. Big ten. <laughs> right. <laughs> then they get into hitting balls. And so uh, how does someone like you start in terms of you know, what club you're hitting, what shot are you hitting to start? Absolutely, yeah. So we definitely don't want to come out guns a blaze and swinging as hard as we can at the start. So um, for me, I, I start with a I start with a little sandwich, just a few, few sandwiches, just to uh, feel, really feel the club in my hands and um, just kind of get loose, feel my swing, um, get in touch with the ground with the ball, and then uh, and then I kind of move up through the rest of my wedges, the rest of my bag. All right, sweet. Want to get to it then? Absolutely. So with that wedge, you're just kind of, like you mentioned, kind of getting the feel for the club. Is that really all this, these first couple swings are? Absolutely, yeah. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the feel of my swing. I'm picking a target. Okay. Um, like I said, I, I, do, I do hit a lot of wedges. You know, we're always going to be hitting pitches usually right. during the round. So for me, it's just kind of feeling the swing, feeling impact, okay. feeling the club in my hands. Sure. Just to kind of, just to kind of get moving and get started. Very nice one. So, Thanks, Drew. <laughs> I mean, it was right at the target. So, um, now after, you know, obviously I think you hit more wedges than that maybe in your real warm up, but, you know, moving on to like the next club here. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Is it, do you go every club or like what's the science behind? you know, the, the select clubs that you actually hit. Sure, sure. Well, you know, like I said, we're not trying to practice on the range. We're just trying to get warmed up. Yeah. You know, one time I was complaining to my, my coach that I didn't have the best warm up and she said, what's, what's it called? It's called a warm up. It's not a practice right. session. You know, how you hit it on the range is not necessarily sure. indicative of how, of how you're going to hit it on the course. So it's really, like I said, just about getting your body moving and feeling good and, and just feeling feeling loose sure. so after I hit some sand wedges I'll, I'll move into some some more full wedges so I've, I've got this gap wedge that's a okay. part of my iron set so uh, okay. I'll hit some some more full wedges as if I were to have say a, more like 120 yards okay. into the green okay so that's kind of your, you said 120, is kind of your, your distance for that club? Uh, maxed out, yeah, that one probably went more like 110. But okay, wow. Well, <laughs> just, mean, uh, just, yeah. Well, interesting, I, I think it'd be, you know, interesting to kind of get the inside of, you know, maybe the yardages a little bit in, in your sure. bag, because, you know, I think everybody's got those numbers in their mind, but obviously someone like you is probably a little more dialed than, than most players. So. Sure, yeah, well, I mean, and there's gapping, right? So, um, so I, I would hit this club right here, I would hit this club from between, probably 112 to 120. Okay. Um, 
which I guess is not that. Yeah. It's well, a pretty small gap. <laughs> well, uh, that means that's a good thing, though, probably, because you kind of have, you have that number covered and you have the other wedges in your bag that can cover anything else. And right, sure. sure. And, or if I needed, say, if I needed something just a little bit lower that I wanted to, you know, skip it and check as opposed to something really high and lofty, yeah. then I could use this from 95. Yeah, or a, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I know uh, it's, we talk about gapping all the time when it's, oh, it, anything about wedges, really, you got to make sure that you got those gaps covered because it's the big, I think the common mistake that golfers make is, you know, pitching wedge maybe to like 56 or 54. They right. don't have that gap wedge in their bag and there's right. a huge, uh, you know, number of yards there where they don't really have a shot for it. So. Oh yeah, there was a lot of decisions that were, that were made going into oh, my I'm wedges. Oh, I'm sure, so. yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so maybe I'll go, go a little bit harder at this one. I like the uh, divot pattern too. Take notes for the viewers. You know, that's how you hit, that's how you hit on the range. You don't hit random divots all over the place. You gotta make that divot line. Uh, just, just help save the grass a little right, bit. Right, right. So moving on from the gap wedge, what's the next club? The next club up, do the same thing. I, I like to hit a ton, I'd like to hit a ton of wedges. I'll come back and yeah. hit a few more at the end. So I'll just, I'll hit a couple pitching wedges and then, oh, okay. and then I'll move into the iron. So. I'll probably at this point start a new start a new divot line, <laughs> and I'll probably I'll probably pick a new target. And I like to I like to hit at usually at least four to five in a row that were executed exactly the okay. way that I wanted it to. So, you know, obviously there's not a lot of wind or anything right. right now, but I like to envision the shot as if I were on the golf course. If I wanted to hit something a little more flighted, something a little higher, maybe something that just barely drew. We're hitting a wedge, something that yeah. just barely drew or, or just barely, barely okay. caught. So. So now how, I have to ask, how like picky are you about when you say perfectly executed shot? Like, is it like, I mean, how, how much of a miss or how, how far offline are we talking before yeah, you're like, I got to start over? You know, Drew, that's a good question because I'd say that, you know, sometimes the warm up starts to get a little too long and yeah. I'm like, all right, you know what, that one, that one can be good yeah. enough. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I imagine someone like you is probably a little bit of perfectionist, you know, and Definitely. you get really picky on maybe an actual practice session. So then kind of maybe differentiating a practice session from your warm up is absolutely, probably a big deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I mean, like like I said, it is, it is a warm up, mm -hmm. so, you know, if if everything doesn't go absolutely perfectly, it'll be right. it'll be all right mm -hmm. and you know, we we move on and we just we keep getting loose and keep getting ready. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, now Emma, you've got the, the big stick here. So you've kind of walked up and you hit, was it eight, six, and four iron? Yep. Um, and now we've worked our way up to driver. You're kind of just like you said, you're really trying to hit four to five shots really well executed with each club. Mm -hmm. So now you're kind of starting to wrap up a little bit, but you've mm -hmm. got driver. So walk me through your, I guess, warm up with, with driver. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I would say something about, something about my game is that, uh, you know, accuracy is obviously important, but I would definitely say that. I try to try to get the most out of this guy right mm -hmm. here. So um, I'm definitely going to be swinging on the range pretty hard, try, trying to get loose. So same thing. I'll pick a target and I'll pick a ball flight, and um, I'll just try to make the best swing that I can. Okay. Baby fade. So that one, so that one cut a little bit. This time I'm going to try to come a little more from the inside, and this time I'm going to try to hit a hit a high draw. What do you like okay. to hit through? You like high draws I, or cuts? That, yeah, you're asking the wrong guy because <laughs> I I just hit the ball, I just swing, and I just whatever happens happens. So. <laughs> you can do it. I, I've got faith in you. <laughs> wow. So now we got we got both shots. Yeah. We got the fade. We got the draw. So is it, it when you're you know. You're going through your driver. You, same thing as a four to five well executed shots, you, and then you're kind of committing to a fade, committing to a draw, and you're just seeing how well you can, you know, match your swing up. Yeah, you know, the driver is a little bit more about just like how how it feels. I would say definitely in the iron set, I like to stick to kind of like okay. four to five good shots. Um, with the wedges, I like to hit as, as many just to feel really good. Yeah. And with the driver, I mean, if I pound one and I feel awesome about it, then. Then we're shipping it to the putting green. Then we're getting going. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> but okay. I mean, if I if I feel like I, I didn't quite um, didn't quite make a great swing, good turn, mm -hmm. um, then then I'll keep going sure. until I feel good about it. Sure. So now 
You, you mentioned at the, kind of be, at the beginning, you know, maybe you don't end with drivers, so you kind of maybe wind down a little bit. How old does that process go? Like what clubs are you taking out of the bag to maybe, I guess, wind down your warm up or kind of maybe get ready for the, for the first tee? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if you think about walking to the first tee and the amount of time you spend warming up, when you walk to the first tee, you don't want to be like, okay, so in the last 40 minutes, the only thing I've done is hit a putt and hit a drive. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's why I would say I, I like to wind down with just, just a few more, few more uh, you know, maybe three quarter wedges just okay. to, again, again, feel good about, um, about, about those swings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, so now you've completed kind of the, the hitting portion, uh, the swinging portion of your warm up, and now you're kind of heading towards the short game area. So walk me through the plan there, uh, putting and chipping specifically. Yeah, yeah. So after I leave the range with my last few wedges, feel like I got got some good tempo mm -hmm. and and got everything everything all back there. Then I um, then I, I go to usually I'll go to the chipping green yeah. and um, I'll spend usually only about ten minutes at the chipping green, um, hitting hitting high shots, low shots, a few from the bunker, a few from the rough, a few from the fairway. Sure. And then I go into the putting green and I usually start with a. Uh, I start with uh, mid, mid range putts, just around 15 feet. Yeah. And then I, I move out to, to some long lag putts, just really get a feel for the distance, uphill, downhill. And then I, I work back to some, sh some shorter putts. I usually I like to hit a lot of five footers around the green. And I yeah. always, every single time I leave the putting green, I always gotta make two four footers right in a row. So. Okay, <laughs> interesting. So that's one of those looks kind of looking in at some, that's maybe unique to you maybe a little bit where uh, I know I'm sure a lot of golfers kind of at your skill level have something like that where mm -hmm. they're, Right before they go tee off, they got, I got to do this. I have to, you know, hit a couple chip shots close. I got to make these putts. Yeah, almost like um, a superstition. I mean, yeah. I can't be walking the first tee knowing I just missed a little putt. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> right. Well, and then you know, lastly, I wanted to ask too about like when you're on the putting green. Um, is there anything in you know really in particular you're looking at for speed, getting the speed down? Um, and maybe I know you talked about making sure there's a difference between your practice session and your warm up. So mm -hmm. maybe there's drills that you do when you're practicing that you maybe just kind of maybe, I don't say ignore, but you want to just, instead you're, like you said, you're getting a feel for the green. You're not really doing mm -hmm. drills, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've worked on, I've worked on, tried a lot of different stuff when it comes to the putting warm up. You know, a lot of people like to go out with a, with a string line yeah. or a training aid, like to warm up with that. I've done some of that in the past, but sometimes that gets me a little too obsessed with my stroke yeah. and a little too, like if I think that something might be off then I don't go to the first tee with as much confidence. Sure. So um, I like just, yeah, definitely, um, uphill, downhill, long lag putts, really just getting a, a feel for the greens. And go, I go through my full uh, routine as far as lining up the ball yeah. and um, a full pre-shot putting routine that yeah. I would do on the golf course when, sure. I, when I hit those five footers, left sure. to right, right to left. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up, right? At this point now, you're ready to go to the first tee and, and drop a little score out there. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> All right, well, Emma, thanks for joining and kind of showcasing a little bit of uh, your warm-up routine, getting ready for competition. So uh, I think the last thing to say is good luck today and go low here at the Minnesota Women's State Open. Awesome. Thank you so much, Drew. I had fun.